Hi guys, it's Arch Woman now. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. You haven't seen me for a long while, and now you're gonna see me for a long while. If you watch this video anyway, for however many minutes it might be, it's time for the everything I added to my collection in 2021, or insert year right here. Normally I would do it in front of a table. That's not possible right now because there is a giant Christmas tree on said table. So we're gonna do it this way. I will try my best to put the names in so everyone can see what the, the perfumes are. So without further ado, let's keep it simple. This is everything that I added to my collection in 2021. Be prepared. I will try and make it not so long. All right, let's go. Oh, also they're in chronological order of when I got them because hey, I'm an anal retentive. What can I say? Don't judge. You know what, I should get a class because some of them are gonna be dusty. I can feel it already in my bones. So the first thing I added to my collection in 2021 is June by Christian Dior. This was sent to me by a lovely subscriber called Lara and anyone that knows and loves Christian Dior's June might squeal a little bit when I say, it's the vintage, don't you know? Yeah the gorgeous vintage version of Dior June. One of the most beautiful kind of orangey, aldehyde really woody perfumes from the 90s, which I think is very, very beautiful still today. And I've actually worn quite a bit of it since I got it. Oh, I'll try not to do mini reviews because we'll be here all day. If you know June, you're gonna love it. It's amazing. The next thing is the only Lush perfume I added to my collection. Really don't need any more. Got quite a few of them already. However, I made a trip to Lush and I smelled this one in the shop and couldn't stop thinking about it. So I bought it. It's called Dad's Garden. And this one is a kind of sour green perfume with honeysuckle and chamomile, as it says right there on the bottle. And yeah, I really like this. I wore this a lot, even though it doesn't look like it, but that is for one season for me. I wore this quite a lot in spring. It has got this weird tang to it, which I sometimes don't like, but other times I really appreciate that and I do like it. So yeah, anyway, it's a honeysuckle fragrance mainly and I don't own a fragrance that has that much of a prominent honeysuckle note, which is why I wanted to get it. Always trying to fill the gaps. The next one was a random gift from my lovely perfume fairy godmother who I hope is watching this. Margie, you know I love you. I'm just cleaning the bottle because it's been in a drawer for a while. I wear it sometimes to bed. Anyway, it's Freak by Illamasqua, complete with missing little snail. I don't care, I love this perfume that much. I had this way back and uh, finished it all and I really regretted it actually. And now this thing sells for such a huge amount on eBay, I'm not sure why. If you wanna know a funny story about this perfume, apparently this was the formula that Lady Gaga wanted for her perfume when she was creating her one, but Illamasqua got there first. That's what I hear on the grapevine. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's based around poisonous flowers. It's got this kind of red berry, belladonna type smell, but also with quite a lot of laundry musk going on. I just really like it and it, it sold for quite cheap when it was out and now I see it for ridiculous prices. So very appreciative to have this one. So yeah, this is Freak by Illamasqua. They're actually a, a perfume. No, they're not a perfume. They are a makeup brand first and foremostly. Anyway, that one. The next one I got towards the beginning of the year and it is my favorite diptyque perfume. It's called Athoniel Rosa. And this one is a really modern rose with loads of pepper, vetiver, ivy, and a rose that is uh, a kind of fantasy rose that was bred for the artist by a rose breeder and then headspace technology used on it and then put into a perfume. It's a really good, clean, very tenacious perfume that is lasts forever and travels miles down the road. So I also have a backup of it. I have a second full one, which has a little flibbity gibbet thing on it, which has got my name and Gemini on it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just really, really like this. Let me see if I can show you. It says Thomas with the Gemini symbol because that is my star sign for anybody that wants to ask me that in the next questions and answers video. There you go, I preempted you. The next five are when I had a kind of moment of madness and not madness really, but you will know as a perfume collector that sometimes you go through these rushes and when you see something for cheap and then you kind of buy a few of them because you don't want to miss the opportunity. So I've said it before and I'll say it again. I love 
the perfumes by an English perfumer. Her name is Ruth Marstenbrook. Two of her perfumes I adore and I always fight with myself about which one I like more. I can't decide, so I'm telling myself, you like both equally, just get over it. I happened to come across a seller on Evil Bay that was selling a 100ml bottle of one of my two favourites called Signature and that's why it doesn't have a lid, it was kind of like a, an Evil Bay sale and it was £35 and that was the starting bid and I bid on it and nobody else bid on it and I got it. So I was really, really happy about that, of course. So they had another one, so I got the second one as well. So I got 200 mils of Signature by Ruth Marstenbrook, which to me is happy, happy, joy, joy. Mm. This one's a really interesting pineapple-y, oak, moss, sheepra type perfume. This is the old style bottle as well, where the design kind of goes through the front. And it's a little girl on a swing, but you might not be able to see that. Oh, there you go, look, there she is swinging. And it's just stunning, really. Uh, I've never reviewed this perfume actually, but I really, really should. Anyway, moving on. The same Evil Bay seller was selling my other favorite perfume of hers, which is called Amarosa. This is a beautiful soapy tuberose perfume, which I say smells like the original Pantene conditioner from the 90s, which I was obsessed with. I have told this story before on my channel and I got Three of them, because why not? I, one of them I think I got for about 17 pounds, which is just ridiculous, really, when you consider how good these perfumes are. So if you don't know Ruth Marstenbrook perfumes, she is a fantastic English perfumer that's doing such great things, but no one really shouts about her, so I'm gonna do it. Go and check out at least these two from her line. Just great. The next one is one of my favorite things I added to my collection this year. It's become, something that I'm really looking forward to wearing now that it's getting absolutely freezing outside in London. Today I walked home through a park and the rain hit my face sideways. That's where we're at in the UK, guys. Anyway, it's Lita and it's by a company called Bogue or some people call it Bogue. I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I call it Bogue, which is bug, you know, bug. Um, this brand is quite popular among niche lovers. They've got a couple of, I guess famous in the niche community. There's one called My, there's one called Mem. And this one was a collaboration with the guys from The Kooks, the lead singer from The Kooks and his wife. They've started a band and they've created a perfume called Lita, which is Love in the Afternoon. It's the name of their, their first album. They actually messaged me and thanked me for reviewing it, which I was super over the moon with. But this is, Huge, I mean, I've reviewed it. Go and watch it. I won't keep you guys sitting here long. It's a big white floral myrrh, coffee-like powder thing. Lots going on. The perfumer is Antonio Gardoni and he is known for making very complex and bold perfumes that are very, very unique. So Lita, yeah, very special, love it. The next couple are from none other than my favorite brand, Zoologist. I bought myself a backup of my I guess my favorite zoologist perfume, which is Moth. I also, at near that time, bought a bottle of Sloth as well. Um, you guys have seen Moth so many times on my channel, I don't need to show you it. I'll show you Sloth though. And the reason I bought Sloth was because it was the, the one zoologist that I kept thinking about, thinking if I could add one more, what would it be? And Sloth was the one for me. Um, love the perfumer, it's Prin Lomros. You guys know I'm a fan of him. This perfume is one of those ones that I couldn't get out of my head. Um, I have reviewed it as well, and it took me a really long time to figure it out. I couldn't figure out what I was smelling, how it developed. It was this, it was that, it was complex. It was pulling me in all different directions. And when that happens with a perfume, when I still am intrigued by it, even after I've reviewed it, I just wanted to get it. So I wanted to add a little sloth to my collection and look how cute he is as well, hold on. Look at his little cute face. Oh my God, he's so cute, I wanna smooch him. It's a foresty perfume, moss. Um, there's, is it eucalyptus? I can't remember. It's got acai berry and it's got a lactonic feeling. It's, it, it's very weird and very, very cool. So I got sloth. I must say as well, this was the first time I'd ever actually purchased a zoologist perfume directly from Victor and it was really nice to have the whole zoologist customer experience. 
It came in three days from Canada. I was very impressed and the packaging it comes in with the zoologist paper, oh, it's just a cute thing. You guys know I love zoologists, right? Yeah. Along with my sloth, and not something that I did order, but was something that was sent to me by Victor because he's such a gent, is musk deer. And it's the limited edition bottle of musk deer, which I have not opened. I still have a 10 mil of this perfume, which I'm still using. Uh, such a pretty pearlescent bottle. The camera's gonna go crazy, I'm really sorry. You, you guys know me, I'm not the best with technology. Good with the smells though. Um, yeah, so I was just super happy that he sent me that. It's such a nice gesture. He knows I'm a fan and it's, it's glittery, so yay. I will admit, it's not one of my favorite zoologist perfumes. It really isn't. However, I'm gonna finish my 10 mil off and get to know it a little bit better, just to try. The next one was a perfume that I got from a lovely little English brand called Ostens. They're a new brand owned by two absolutely gorgeous, true gentlemen that I went to meet. I did a spotlight video on their sample set where I talked about each of their perfumes and they said, hey, do you wanna come meet us? It would be really nice to see you. I went, sat down, had a chat with them, went to their showroom got to have a look at uh, Chris's perfume collection. Gosh, he's got a lot of perfumes. Uh, and they asked me if I wanted to choose one while I was there, my favorite from the line. So I did. And I chose their absolutely stunning, but very unassuming uh, Rose Esparta, it's called. It's in the simplest of bottles. If you walked into a perfume shop like Harrods, you would walk past this. But you shouldn't. This perfume is made by my favorite perfumer, Dominique Ropion. It's a huge Turkish rose with a massive orange blossom as well. They also gave me this tiny little bottle of the, um, not pure, but sing singular rose esparta oil, which you can use to layer with this cute little glass wand. I love stuff like that, which is handmade apparently as well. Lovely brand, lovely perfume. If you want to smell like a bunch of roses, rich Turkish sweet roses with dashes of orange blossom, you have to try this out. And obviously Dominique Ropion made it. You know you're in good hands. The next perfume is called Act and it's by a German brand called Der Duft. Some guys that I've become friends with. Uh, this is their latest perfume, also made by Prin Lomros who made Sloth. And this one I haven't worn too much, I must say. I have reviewed it though. It is true to Prince. he likes foresty darkness and that's what's going on here. And I remember there was a lot of citruses in here as well, which stayed, they stayed on my skin a lot and I was surprised by that. I'm gonna put it on me right now. I never know which one I'm gonna randomly choose to put on my skin when, I'm, when I do these videos. Yeah, big citrus and a kind of pine forest smell. And I remember when you wear this one, there's an animalic that's just waiting to burst out at you. There's, a, there's like a beast waiting behind. This huge animalic note gets revealed, which darkens the whole composition and it's, it's pretty fun. So this is gonna work really well in now cold weather. I might keep this one out. Yeah, anyway, this is Act and it's by Deduft. The next two were again from the Perfume Fairy Godmother. She strikes again. She strikes again a few times in this video, so watch out for the ones later. Oh my gosh. She sent me two that she didn't really get along with and I actually love both of them very much. They're both by Ely Saab. This one is Ely Saab in white. And this one in the best way possible and not sounding mean, it smells like an airport. It smells like a whole bunch of designer perfumes thrown into one bottle and sometimes you just want that. You really do. But I really like this one. Both are centered around orange blossom. This one, I think I prefer. This is the Eclat something. Eclat d'or. Name will be here anyway, don't worry. This one really smells like the Jean-Paul Gaultier pointy booby bottle, which is called Essence. Jean-Paul Gaultier Essence. Really nice, but actually even richer. So if you like that, Maybe try and find this one. I really like this bottle too. Is it gonna focus? It's like a crystal thing of joy. The next thing is one of, another one of my favorite things that I've added to my collection this year. Kind of wish I'd gotten more, but I feel like it's been renamed. And this perfume is called Goddess. That's not gonna work, is it? Oh no. And this one's by Aaron Terence Hughes, who is another English perfumer. I like to try and 
keep it at home sometimes, you know, you've got to represent or you've got to, you've got to support your local homegrown perfumers. They have their own voice, so why not? Absolutely love this. I wore this out recently and it is, while it's a very soft perfume, it stays on skin and the room that the jacket was in that you were wearing it with just for days. This, this perfume just really doesn't like to leave where it's sprayed. And for some people, that's a big selling point. This one's a gardenia with vanilla and it's got this skin musk accord in it, which is what makes it magical for me. It makes it super sensual, very, it's very, very feminine. I mean, I don't have any bones saying that, you know, but wow, really nice white floral enveloped in the softest musk that is, that projects like crazy, 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 crazy. Guy that was in a toilet, this is gonna sound strange, the security guard guy that sometimes is in a toilet when you go to a bar said, what the hell is that? I need it, I went and got my coat, I went and got my bag out, I sprayed it on him, he was loving it, I showered him in it. It was a fun night. <laughs> so anyway, Goddess by Aaron Terence Hughes. Along with that, when I ordered Goddess, Aaron Terence Hughes sent this 30ml bottle of his perfume called Fake. Admittedly, I haven't tried this one yet, I'm not too familiar with what it is. It's called Fake and I don't really know what's in it, but off the top of my head, it smells very sweet. I'm not really sure, it smells sweet to me, so I'll have to wear it and see what it's like. I'm not really into the sweet stuff. Anyway, the next one is very, very special. A lovely subscriber of mine called Lucinda sent me this. It is Tom Ford's Champaka Absolute. I mentioned this in passing in a video because I had tried it in the Tom Ford shop and kind of fell in love with it. Oh gosh, it, it was just really, really good. And she messaged me and said, hey, you know, I've got a bottle. I really, I'm not gonna use it. I would love to send it to you. I was over the moon. I just love this in the dry down actually more than the opening. The opening's got this sort of date, burnt sugary type feeling with lots of champaka, which I love. When it dries, it kind of goes to like a lily of the valley powder. It's almost like two different perfumes, but I like both stages very much. And I was very, very appreciative when Lucinda sent me it. So Lucinda, if you're watching this video, again, thank you so much. Such a good addition to my collection and my first ever Tom Ford private blend. So yay, milestone reached. Just gave myself a little break because the next 20 bottles or so are all from the same brand. So I'll skim through them because I'm thinking maybe I should just do a video about these on their own. But I gained a lot of perfumes from this brand and it's a brand that I think is liked by a lot of people and it is Diptyque. So without further ado, let's just, let's just get through them. So the first one is Au Capital. This is in my top three Diptyque perfumes. I have reviewed this one. It is a peppery patchouli rose and it's a Chypre, a kind of modern Chypre. I have a backup too, so I have two of them. Two of them. The next one is one of the more challenging fragrances I think that Diptyque make and it's called Lotre, Lotre. This is one of the early ones and it's a real complex vintage style perfume. I said I was gonna skim through them. I just can't help myself, can I? I will try. A lot of these are partials as well. They're partials, they were gifts. Uh, I won some of them as well. This one's a kind of tea-ish, lemongrassy, cumin, Indian spice, very vintage, very hard to wear perfume, but I appreciate it for what it is. The next one is Dusan. This is the best-selling perfume from Diptyque. It's tuberose, orange blossom, jasmine. I am quite frankly sick of this perfume right now. <laughs> I've had this perfume a couple of times over in my life. Some of these I think I'm probably gonna give away, maybe on my group or to my mom or some friends, I don't know, but Dusan anyway. Geranium odorata. This one is geranium leaves and tonka, and I believe maybe possibly cardamom. Ophrygia. This one is freesia, carnation, pepper, and springtimey goodness. It smells kind of like a florist. I kind of like this one. It's definitely a springtime perfume and one that I will wear in the upcoming spring to see if I really want to keep it. Let's just say that. The next one's a great one, but it's really hard to like, and it's called Lotois. And this one is 
a really good frankincense. If you like frankincense, it's a very big, coniferous, sharp, piney, foresty frankincense enveloped in myrrh. And then you've also got uh, quite a lot of labdanum in there, which gives it just a soft amberiness underneath. But really the frankincense is the star of the show and I love the color of this perfume. When a perfume is this color, I was gonna say when a perfume is shaped like this, <laughs> when a perfume is this color, it makes my eyes happy because you know that there's goodness in there. When it's naturally this color, not when it's had artificial colors put in. Next one's another great one, Orpheon. This is one of the newer ones that came out in 2021. It's a juniper fragrance with tonka, jasmine, and cedarwood. It's a real vibrant woody perfume. It's an out of the shower fresh. I've reviewed it also. Let's get through them, guys. Philosikos, the one that makes, that made fig famous, I think, in my head anyway. Fig leaves, fig tree, fig fruit, fig twigs, everything figgy. It's themed on Greece and it's a fresh, leafy, green, woody fragrance. Vetiverio, this one is a big grapefruit with two types of vetiver, Haitian and Javanese. So you have a bright, sharp citrus element to it and then underneath you have the more dense, woody, dark part of the fragrance. It's quite a good one actually. The next one's such, such a pretty, pretty bottle. Uh, and I'm not sure I like the perfume that much, but still, this one is called Essence Incenses Tiare. It's a tiare flower fragrance with plumeria as well, and it feels a little bit aquatic. And this one actually reminds me quite a lot of Squid by Zoologist. Very surprisingly, I, I thought Squid was very unique when I first tried it. And I tried this one and I said, why does it feel like Squid? It's, it's the weird aquatic incensiness that Squid has that is quite present in here. And the bottle is pretty cool. And you know what I will also tell you? These puffer things here, these, they get quite a bit of a bad rap for evaporating your perfume. This has been around for a long time and this has never gone down. So. Either Diptyque are very good at making their atomizers, or what people say is a lie. I don't know. I do believe people, I really do. The next one's a bit of a signature for Diptyque. It's L'Ombre Don Law. This is the scent of their best-selling candle, which is Bay. It's blackcurrant bud, blackcurrant leaves, Bulgarian rose and petit grain. It's orange tree twigs and leaves. It's, I describe it as a, a foresty rose. That's how it feels to me. Let's move to this side. Oud Palau, the only oud fragrance that Diptyque make. It's quite a typical combination. It's rose, vanilla, and oud, but it is real oud. So that's a nice thing. It's quite a smoothed out oud. The vanilla makes it a little bit sweet and soft, and the rose isn't too prominent, but it's definitely in there. Eau de Sons, this is Diptyque's orange blossom perfume with patchouli and juniper and woody notes underneath, but really it's about a very clean orange blossom. It's the star of the show. It's a simple one and it's really easy to wear and it's also a big compliment getter. Orange blossom is always going to be a winner, I think. This one's another fan favourite. It's Fleur de Pau. This is a really tenacious iris perfume with lots of musk underneath. It's actually ambrette that's underneath the iris and then you've got cinnamon as well so it's got a tiny bit of spice but really it's about this iris that lingers on with an everlasting slightly dirty musky note underneath really good i've got the body cream of this as well i really like this it's a good one very very pretty the next one is this one it's called kimonanth And Kimonanth is a mashup of kimono and osmanthus. And osmanthus is what this perfume is really all about. It is a really sweet, I mean overly sweet, osmanthus perfume with sandalwood. It also has Zuko incense in it from Japan because it's a Japanese themed perfume, don't you know? And for me, it's got a little bit of a Jaeger bomb type smell. It, it feels like something you might drink. It's, it's very sweet, very soft and verging on cloying, I would say. But if you like it, you like it. The next one is a fantastic one and it's called Benjamin Bohem. I have it in its little pouch here. This is a gorgeous perfume. It's uh, mainly about benzoin, obviously, so it's got this powdery, resinous feeling. There's also Peru balm in here, it's ambery, it's gently spiced as well. It's really elegant benzoin perfume. 
Yeah, this is good. So it smells really peppery as well. And uh, I really like the bottle. I like the lid. I like the look of it. There you go. You can have a closer look. It's kind of like a cracked glass bottle. Same as Kim and Anth, but um, yeah. Really, really like this one. This one's a keeper for sure. And the last couple. This one is the black eau de toilette version of 34. It's an ambery perfume with eucalyptus and warm spices in the top, as well as five flowers in the heart. So it's got violet, it's got jasmine, it's got, I think, rose as well, because Diptyque put rose in a lot of things. Really beautiful perfume. I already own this. This one is a second kind of backup y partial. Yeah, that's what it is. And the last one is the Eau de Toilette version of 34 with the white lid. Totally different. It's a springtime green, leafy, floral, black currant leaves. Fig, I think, as well. Possibly cardamom. I'm not sure. This one's meant to smell like the entire boutique in Paris. It's like a snapshot of the air. And I also got a backup of this. So I have two of them because I really like this one. And I've used this one so much uh, towards the end of summer. I used lots of it. It was nearly full. So... Yeah, those are my Diptyque perfumes. Let's move on to the last little stretch. Are you still with me? You, wake up, wake up. <laughs> Let's just clear them all up. It's, just, it's a lot, it's a lot going on right now, a lot. Holy moly. All right, we're on the home stretch. Are you still there? Let's do it. The next three things I got were from one of my favorite brands that not many people know about but if you know them you know them they're called black phoenix alchemy lab and they are from america i got myself three perfume oils by this brand and i've been collecting them since 2005 i'm an old school not a super old school collector but i consider myself quite an old school collector over this brand so i got blue moon this is going to be really hard to focus blue moon from 2015 i previously owned this perfume but um used it and wanted to get it back and I found somebody that was selling it. I got a second different Blue Moon, which I hadn't, excuse me. I also got a second Blue Moon. I think this one's from 2019 possibly, maybe way, uh, the date I'm probably getting wrong, but it's a totally different one to the other one. It's a patchouli kind of piney one, I think. And then I got this one, which is called Budding Moon. And this one, I'm not too impressed or enamored by but it doesn't matter. I got it on a blind buy and on a whim. It's kind of boring. Um, but anyway, that's those three. The next thing is this giant gold sparkly thing, which <laughs> was sent to me by a brand. I will tell you guys that they messaged me and asked me if I wanted to try one of their perfumes and they gave me a choice. And this one's called Altair. You can see it there. And it's by a brand called Spirit of Kings. I sung this one's praises in the video that I mentioned it in because I really enjoy it. I do find the bottle to be a little bit over the top. Uh, not really my style. And God, it's really good though. So yes, a lot of people say that it's a dupe for Tom Ford's Black Orchid. I can see why. It's very, very similar. I actually prefer this though and I'm not sure why it's just as good as Tom Ford's Black Orchid it's got a little bit more of a white musk added in and it's also for me much longer lasting huge 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 longevity on this perfume I wore this on a day where I sprayed it on at 8 in the morning I went to work, it was a particularly busy day where I was running up and down stairs, there was a delivery, I was sweating and when I got home very late that night I went into a shop to buy something and the lady behind the counter was wearing a mask and she said, wow I can really smell your fragrance, what is that, it's lovely. That's just a sign that it can withstand heat, pressure, weather systems, sweat, grime, blood and tears. So this is called Altair and it's by Spirit of Kings really really like it if you like black orchid check it out the next lovely thing was sent to me by prin lomras who's one of my favorite perfumers he sent me a whole bunch of stuff he sent me a lot of 10 mils of all of the new things of his that i hadn't tried over a year possibly even a year and a half but he included in it a bottle of one of my new possibly my actual favorite from his strangers line which is called a sort of fairy tale in Hyde Park. I've talked about this perfume quite a bit on my channel. And when I had my meetup with some of you guys 
in, I don't know when it was, summer, I lose track of time. I wore this that day and it got compliments. One of you guys even went out and bought it the very next day. It's a springtime mimosa, linden blossom feeling type perfume. A spring floral that's got such beautiful soft edges. I, I just really enjoy this perfume a lot. And I've got a 10 mil of it already, which I'm using, but Prince sent me an actual bottle. So I've got this ready to use when my 10 mil runs out. Yay, so good. Sort of fairy tale in Hyde Park by Strangers Perfumery. It's a winner for me. The next two are backups. Well, there's backup of a backup, I should say. And it's White Patchouli by Tom Ford. This is in my top 10 perfumes ever. I've mentioned it before. And the reason I got it is because I heard on the grapevine that it was being discontinued and it sent me into a blind panic. I'm sure we've all been there where you hear that one of your favorites is going and you just kind of hoard. I still don't know if it's actually being discontinued or not. I'm, I'm none the wiser but I am happy that I've got them. So I bought myself a 100 mil backup and I got myself a mini 50 mil one as well because my other 100 mil is pretty much empty. Just adore this perfume so much. So that's the reason why. The next two bottles are the same. Kind of similar situation. <laughs> um, these perfumes are really affordable and I am a big fan of Argent Provocateur's La Jante perfume. I knew that I had smelled this one before and that I kind of liked it. I just wanted to remind myself. And nowadays they are affordable enough that you can, I mean, not everyone, but it's not so heartbreaking if you blind buy them. I think I got this for about 17 pounds for the 100 mil. Got it, wore it to bed for three nights in a row, fell in love with it, and then managed to get the bigger 200 mil one as well. It was one of those silly things where you really don't need to do that, Tom but sometimes you just can't help yourself. So what can I say? I ended up with 300 mils of perfume that I like. So I wear it to bed more often, why not? It's a rose essentially, but it's also got kind of lactonic white florals in it and a bunch of powder. It's a bit, I describe it as being a bit mumsy <laughs> and I mean that in a positive way. It's kind of like a, a hug from mum. I don't know, with a, a bit of a dark edge. I'm not sure where that comes from, but I just really enjoy this. I've already used probably that much of it. That says quite a lot considering how many fragrances I own. So yeah, I went a bit crazy on that one, but it wasn't a break the bank moment. So, you know, I can be forgiven, right? The next little bunch is Perfume Fairy Godmother Strikes Again. She was very good to me this year. She's good to me every year. What am I saying? She sent me four perfumes in a parcel. So the first one is this one, and it's called Delina, and it's by Parfum de Mali. How much love can one perfume get in the fragrance community? A lot, let me tell you, a lot. She said she wasn't really getting on with this perfume, so did I want it? I said, yes, of course. I had smelled it and talked about it in a previous video where I said I didn't really get the hype, but why not? Why not get a bottle and try it a bit more, you know? So. This is Delina with its cute little twinkle on the top. It's a rose rhubarb, very easy going sweet perfume that I still personally think gets way too much hype for what it is. But I can see that this would be an easy reach for a lot of people, but it's they're just not very cheap, these perfumes. And I, I still don't think it's worth the price. I have to be honest. The next one is this one. It is Stash by Sarah Jessica Parker. I remember the first time I tried this and I was not repulsed, but I was quite shocked at how brash it was. And I tried it again and then I just really started to applaud Sarah Jessica Parker for releasing a fragrance marketed towards women that was very intentionally dark and woody and what you would consider masculine. This feels like a multi woody, pencil shaving, sandalwood, cedarwood, oaky type, almost smoky perfume. And it works lovely in cold weather. So yeah, I've been wearing that one a little bit recently actually. So Stash by Sarah Jessica Parker. The next one she sent me is this one and I'm not too familiar with it yet. I haven't really worn it because we're coming towards the end. These are new things. And it's this one by Creed. It's called Florissimo. And I haven't really tried it, like I said, but from what I do know of it, this smells like a vintage citrus floral. 
it's got all the elements of something like a throwback splash on with possible kind of aldehyde type things going on. It definitely smells vintagey and it's not the prettiest thing I've smelled either, but it's something that I need to wear. It's like a spring green floral with a vintage throwback underneath. So yeah, that's Florissimo by Creed. She also sent me the lovely Amsterdam by a British brand called Galavant. And this brand's perfumes are all inspired by places around the world or cities. Uh, this one, of course, is a tulip perfume. It's sweet, it's playful, it's got a little bit of a kind of pollen type feeling going on somewhere in the middle. And um, yeah, I really like it. It's just so dinky and cute, look. It's the size of my ear. Um, but yeah, I have smelled it before. I just need to wear it a little bit more. So on to the last couple of things, we're almost there. The next three were also from Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. I got this in a group order from a Facebook group. I got this one, which is called Sawan. It's spelled Samhain, but it's Sawan, which is something to do with a pagan festival and Halloween. It's a pine, patchouli, pumpkin, falling leaves, spiced type perfume, and I really like it. I also had this a long time ago and wanted to get it back. Oh, it's really good. It's a sweet patchouli autumn pumpkin pine. That's what it smells like. And then these two are backups of uh, probably my, well, it is my favorite incense perfume ever in the world. And it's called Scheherazade and it's also by Black Phoenix. It's a red musk, uh, sandalwoody type, smells like you've just lit an incense stick in your house kind of perfume. It's the perfect incense for me, obsessed. So I hopped on that order and I made sure I got myself two of them because I only have this much left. And the last five in this collection, in this whole video, was yet another parcel that my perfume fairy godmother sent me. Don't worry, I sent her stuff too. I'm not all take, take, take. I'm not what you think. So she sent me moth. Can you believe how happy I am? Uh, I managed to add two bottles of moth to my collection this year. Not gonna complain about that in the slightest uh, because you can never have enough moth. So I now have enough moth to last me a lifetime. I'm happy. She also sent me this beautiful bottle which is gonna come up very fingerprinty on the camera. Uh, this beautiful bottle of Wood Mystique by Estee Lauder. I don't wanna blind you guys. Uh, this is lovely. This is actually one of my favourite things that she sent me over the year. And this is one of those... It feels oody, but I'm not sure there's oody in it. Possibly. When I wear it, I feel like I'm wearing quite a harsh oud, but really it's about multiple other woods as well. I would say it definitely smells quite synthetic. Um, compared to some other ouds that I've tried, but for some reason I just really enjoy this. So that's Wood Mystique by Estee Lauder. Ching, 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 ching. The next thing she sent me is one of my most requested reviews, which I have not done yet. That could change. And it is Coco Noir by Chanel. The amount of comments I've had in the past. Are you gonna review Coco, Coco Noir? Why haven't you reviewed Coco Noir? What do you think of Coco Noir? Well, soon I'll be able to tell you what I think because I actually now have it. So I will be able to form an opinion and uh, maybe do a review and maybe make some of you guys happy. Yay, yay for Chanel. The second to last one is Bulgari Jasmine Noir and this is the Eau de... The second to last one is Jasmine Noir by Bulgari. Also needs a little bit of a wipe, sorry. Uh, this is the Eau de Parfum version. And this one, I don't know about this one. Let's clean it on camera. So, you know, you can see that I do clean my perfumes from time to time. Those of you that have collections that are quite large, you will know the struggle, right? <laughs> the struggle of cleaning your perfumes. I'm kidding. Anyway, this one to me is more about patchouli than jasmine. I don't really smell jasmine in here that much. And I always find that quite baffling when a perfume is named jasmine noir. Uh, there's not much jasmine going on, so to me, it's, it's really quite a scratchy patchouli with maybe a little bit of jasmine mingled in somewhere. But uh, as I only recently just got this, I need to give it a chance. So let's move on to the last and final thing. 
The last thing she sent me and the last thing in this video is by a brand that I've never heard of before and they're called Costume National. Anyone heard of these guys before? Look at this, look, look at this. Oh, look at those lovely fingerprints, oh yeah. And it's called Scent Intense. This one actually blew me away for a reason that I didn't realize was gonna happen. When I first sprayed this, I was trying to put my finger on why it made me feel the way it did and where I recognized it from. If any of you guys know the wonderful fragrance by G.O.F. Trumper, which is just called Sandalwood, this is in that wheelhouse. It smells like G.O.F. Trumper Sandalwood with a really big, clean amber added in. And it's kind of sexy. I don't know. The sandalwood one by G.F. Trumper is sexy anyway. Add in some amber and you've got a, a more of a warm sexy going on. I don't know. Costume National Scent Intense. Something I'm looking forward to wearing, trying now that it's very cold. I hope you guys stuck around. I hope you guys didn't leave me. <laughs> it's been a long video. I'm really sorry about that, but you know, it's a lot of perfume to get through. Anyway, guys, I will see you very soon for another video. I'm Ouch for Mano, trying to make the world smell better one video at a time. And also, Happy New Year to all of you. Okay, speak to you soon. Goodbye.